What's the transition going to look like between the two songs? She says she needs your mic closer to your mouth. Oh, okay. Hey, Bonnie, should I be echoing? it as well, or should I sing with AJ? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, Use the God mic if you want to talk to me, Bonnie. When we first come up here, Jonathan, can you just start playing instrumental for it as well? Because I'm going to talk for like a minute. Just do that, and then Chris will, you lead us into that first song. Go ahead and just do that. That's fine. He can. He's, He's got a great ear. Done it once or twice. <laughs> nope. Okay, you guys are all set. So Pastor AJ is going to sing the last one. This one is after the words from family and friends. So after Tim George's eulogy, folks will talk and then we'll go into so when this. Talking, we come up here? Yeah. When, when when they're done and I start saying, "Is there anyone from the audience?" Like, okay, and I'm walking around with the mic. That's when you guys set up. Yeah, because I have no idea if it's going to be one person or five people. I don't know. If it's nobody, just give us a chance to get set up here. Yep. I'll put on the pad. You'll hear the pad.
imagine what it will be like when I walk by your side. I can only imagine what my eyes will see when your face is before me. Surrounded by your glory, what will my heart feel? Will I dance for you, Jesus? Or in all of you be still? Will I stand in your presence? To my knees will I fall? Will I sing hallelujah? Will I be able to speak it all? I can only Standing in the sun, I can only imagine when all I will do is forever, forever worship you. <laughs> You're gonna love it. <laughs>
There is a care in every soul, some brightly burning and some dark and cold. And there is a spirit who brings a fire, ignites a candle, and makes his own. Carry your candle. Run to the darkness, seek out the helpless, confused and torn, and hold out your candle for all to see it. Take your candle and go light your world. Take your candle. Frustrated brother, see how he's tried to light his own candle some other way. See now your sister, she's been robbed and lied to, still holds a candle without a flame. So carry your candle. Whose hearts are blazing so let's raise our candles and light up the sky praying to our father in the name of jesus make us a beacon in darkest times
good morning. On behalf of um, the family, we want to we want to welcome you and want to thank you for being here as we get ready to honor and celebrate the life of Marie Ann Ross, a life that has impacted and meant so much to so many people. And one of the amazing things about being people of faith is that we have incredible hope even in moments like this. John eleven twenty five, 25, Jesus said these words, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me will live even though they die. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. And so we want to begin by singing some songs of praise and worship that were special to Marie as we really focus in on celebrating again the blessing that was her life to so many of us. And we invite you to stand with us and sing. like a river.
God sent his son. God sent his son. They called him Jesus. He came to love, heal and forgive. He bled and died to buy my pardon. And empty grave is there to prove my Savior lives. Because he At this time, um, we are going to welcome our main district superintendent, Dr. Paul McPherson, to share some words of encouragement from God's word. In moments like this, uh, we find ourselves seeking some word, uh, some word of, of comfort, some word of healing, some word of hope. And, and the truth is that as followers of Jesus Christ, we have been given that word in the incarnate word of, his, uh, of the person of Jesus himself, but he has also given us his word in this written revelation of his father that we call scripture. 
And so we turned this morning to a couple of passages of scripture that were some of Marie's favorites, asking that God, through the very same spirit that inspired these words to be written and recorded, would once again speak these words to our collective hearts this morning. So hear the word of God from Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11. For I know the plans I have for you. Their plans for good and not for a disaster to give you a future and a hope. In Mark's gospel, chapter 6, verse 34, we read these words. Jesus saw the huge crowd as he stepped from the boat and he had compassion on them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. So he began teaching them many things. And David, the psalmist, in very familiar words from the 23rd Psalm, writes, the Lord is my shepherd. I have everything that I need. He lets me rest in green meadows. He leads me beside peaceful streams. He renews my strength. He guides me along right paths, bringing honor to his name. Even when I walk through the darkest valley, even when I walk through the very shadow of death, and remember, shadows are only possible because the light has come. Even when I walk through the very shadow of of death, I will not be afraid, for you are close beside me. Your rod and your staff protect and comfort me. You prepare a feast for me in the presence of my enemies. You honor me by anointing my head with oil. My cup overflows with blessings. Surely your goodness and unfailing love will pursue me all the days of my life, and I will live in the house of the Lord forever. This is the word of God for the people of God, and we respond by saying, thanks be to God. Father, we come into this place this morning completely and wholly dependent upon your presence. Father, we come into this place and we, we admit by our presence that our hearts hurt. For when we have loved deeply, we grieve greatly. And Father, our prayer is this, that your very presence would fill the place of this sanctuary and perhaps more significantly fill the place of the hearts and the minds of this family who gathers and the friends who gather to celebrate a, a life well lived. And Father, may in this moment we all feel the arms of Christ who embraces and sits and simply weeps with us. And may in that presence, Father, there be comfort, may there be hope, May there be peace, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. It's my privilege to introduce to you uh, Reverend Tim George, who is the pastor of our Cape Elizabeth Church. Um, pastor Tim actually spent quite a bit of time with Marie here in her last months, and uh, it's good to have Pastor Tim with us. Before I share a, a few words, I want to say I'm going to uh, open up the floor uh, shortly afterwards and allow you to share something that may have been meaningful in your life, a memory, uh, an aspect of Marie that uh, you just want to uh, uh, take a moment to celebrate with everyone gathered today. And so uh, be thinking of what it is that uh, has just been laying on your heart, a, a joy, a memory that uh, you might want to share today. I met Marie Ross about 10 years ago here at this church, and to know Marie was to know a loving woman of kindness, respect, and friendship. She had always treated my family well, was eager to see how we were adjusting to life in Maine and always asking about us. She was always ready to put a hand on Stan whenever she thought his jokes were getting just a little too over the top. She, she was a wonderful support, uh, not just to myself and my family, but to all the pastoral staff here and their families. She had firsthand experience of the nature of the work of ministry, what that involved, and she loved us with the love of Christ. During her, these, these last few months, I also had the opportunity to engage in her life again when I served as her hospice chaplain. It was then that I had a special glimpse into her home and her heart for hospitality. Every time I went to visit, she would try to play host. She would make sure I was comfortable. She would, she would even offer me uh, to buy me lunch during the visit. I said, like, no, 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 that's not, that's not necessary. But that was just her heart of just wanting to enjoy this time together and help in any way that she could. And it was there that I also began to meet her children whom she was so very proud of and thankful for 
and mentioned every single time I saw her. Every visit was a testimony about the care and provision for her family and of what her family did for her. Of course, while visiting with her, I also got to know another great love of her life, Minnie, who would be protective the first minute you walked in, but then very obviously picked up on Marie's love and hospitality and easily just warm up to you. And they were just two peas in a pod, a wonderful, uh, wonderful, loving uh, relationship there. Uh, but these words are not new to each of you who knew Marie. Whether you were a lifelong friend or a new friend, you were treated with the same love and respect. And of course, her children remember this firsthand from memories of getting the family together around a roast after church or Christmas Eve parties after the church service or with the smell of her cinnamon rolls greeting them the following morning. She delighted in the opportunity to create special moments with her family. And so she loved to gather together with her children and her grandchildren, whether attending a play with them or taking them to the beach or driving around town looking for the next bean supper. These moments were special because they were opportunities where she could continue to bond with and share her heart with those whom she loved. If you had the opportunity to know Marie in her youth, you would have met a lady who loved the outdoors, someone who enjoyed hiking, having traversed Knife's Edge two times at Mount Katahdin. She loved the opportunity to camp and get outside. And uh, those kind of details surprised me as, as I heard of that, and realizing that my experience with her was only a small facet of uh, the abundance of life that she lived. And as I had the opportunity to speak with her, I want you to know that what I also learned was that her faith was very important and very real in her life. She knew God loved her and had a promise and a future for her. She also looked back at a life filled with blessings and with children whom she loved and knew loved her, and this brought her great joy and fulfillment. And she stepped into eternity with the expectation of meeting her Lord and being reunited with Stan. Her life, her heart, was filled with the love of God, and the love of God followed her and flowed out of her every moment her life. True blessing for me to be engaged uh, and connected in friendship with her. At this time, I'm going to invite uh, Heidi to come up and say a few words, and then afterwards, I'm going to open up the floor and allow, allow you to share if you would like to. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Let me make sure this is on for you. Yep. And I'm going to put this right next to you. Okay. There we go. This past year, my siblings and I were able to spend a lot of time with our mom. And it was truly a gift to both her and to us. It was a year filled with love, laughter, and tears. We had countless amounts of french fries, ice cream, lobster, Ken's fish chowder, anything mom really wanted. We, we had it, and it was not healthy, but it was good. Um, we enjoyed going out to the Q Street Diner with Ann would sometimes come with us, or Jess, Holly, and I, or... Sometimes Steph would be up there and we'd get to go out and or we'd get some frozen coffee from Dunkin' Donuts or a butternut donut from Dunkin' Donuts. We just had some good quiet times together and we loved it and we would never change it for a second. But mom was more than that last year. Mom was 85 years of greatness and awesomeness and just the best of everything. We were truly blessed. Mom loved her time being at the Betsy Ross house 
as it was close to Anne and Shannon and Rich and their family and Stephen. But she, she, lo she loved being there in that community and met so many new people and great friends, but she was always so funny because when she first moved there and she'd go meet with all the ladies in the library and Aunt Betsy's picture is in the library, larger than life, and she was like, I don't know, I, I don't want people to know that that's my sister-in-law and think I have any special privileges. And I'm like, Mom, they all know that that is your sister-in-law. Just go with it. Just go with it. Everybody loves Aunt Betsy, so it's fine. But she really loved being there. She loved all the new friends that she met, and she met friends wherever she went. Mom, for, for mom, she was three things, faith, family, and friends. She was the mom who enjoyed sitting on the front porch on Clinton Street, drinking tabs with Mrs. Campbell while all of us kids were running around and playing. She was the mom who took us to Mr. Bagel on the way to church on Sunday mornings. So we would come here when it wasn't this sanctuary, it was over in the old sanctuary. And then there was always a roast in the oven for lunch when we returned home. She was the mom that also never blinked an eye when I'd go off to college and come home with carloads of kids to spend the weekend up in Maine, even though we had just one bathroom in the house and lots of kids now sleeping on the floor. She fed us all. She always welcomed all of our friends. She raised her family here in this church. She taught Sunday school. She was on the church board. She ran small groups and Bible studies. She became a pastor's wife, and she took that job really seriously, and she served every day with compassion and love for those within her congregation and the community. Family was so important to her, and we have so many memories of family gatherings for the holidays, whether at our house or up in Augusta at one of those houses, or at the camps, or in Pemaquid, always getting together, family was important and family was valued. As time went on and we got older and started taking over some of hosting the family gatherings, she still insisted on bringing pretty much most of the meal with her as it was too much for us to do it and she wanted to do it. I'm like, Mom, we can do it. You don't have to bring everything. But she just loved to be a host. She loved to be with family. She loved to be with friends. She went to more ball games, dance recitals, scouting events, church ceremonies, um, everything, you name it. She, she and Stan would go out to games in the rain with their umbrellas, bundle up in their coats, drive to Massachusetts, sit through hours and hours of dance recitals, never complaining, always bragging about her grandchildren, her children, and her great-grandchildren. She loved all of us, despite some of us, some of our not-so-great choices in life, but she never judged us and always moved us forward by her example. She never shied away from telling everyone she met all about of her children, all about her grandchildren and her great children, her nieces and her nephews. She bragged about their accomplishments and she was so very proud of each and every one of us. Mom was a wonderful example of a true friend. She had lifelong friends from childhood and then she had friends that she just met when she moved into the Betsy Ross house, new friends wherever she went and she treated them all the same and she loved them all. She taught me how to be a good friend through her example, to be a listener, to be a giver, to be kind, to always be kind. When mom passed away and so many people reached out, the two number one things that people said was, your mom was so kind. Your mom was such a good friend to me and my family. And to me, that is so important. And I feel like myself, my sister, my brother, 
We have learned so much from her. And when someone says you're just like your mom, pretty awesome because, because she's so awesome. And I just hope that you all go from here today knowing that she loved each of you. She was proud of all of us. And we will each carry a part of her with us. So thank you. AJ's going to bring a mic around just to help make sure you can be heard, but maybe there's a, the part you want to share about uh, how much Marie meant a memory that you would like to uh, share with the friends and family gathered here today. Is there anyone who would like to share a word? <laughs> One of the things about Aunt Marie that... that makes me chuckle and I think it's really cool is that some of you may not know she was a Ross before she was a Ross um, and I, that was the neatest thing I always thought but um, Heidi kind of touched on it and one thing about Aunt Marie I never yeah, and she had plenty of cause to maybe speak ill of someone but I never once heard her say anything bad about anyone um, probably one of the most forgiving persons I, I've ever known and uh, I'm going to miss her. She's something. I, I first met Marie 40 years ago when I started dating her oldest daughter, Holly. And Heidi said it very well. She touched on the very essence of her. She was the embodiment of kindness. But she said, never said a bad word about anybody. And you know, I, I wasn't, when I started dating her daughter, it's funny, the first time we met, I was talking to Heidi and Steve last night. I had just gotten through with my baseball practice at high school. It was 1984 in the spring. And I bumped into Holly and we started talking and it was the beginning of our relationship. And we talked and we talked. And then we started to get hungry. It was starting to get dark. So we walked down to a place in Portland back in the day. It used to be called the walk-in. And... Uh, we walked all the way down there. We had a great dinner. And I'm getting ready to walk back. And Holly's like, we don't have to walk back. I said, what do you mean? She goes, I'm going to call my mother. She'll give us a ride. And I thought that was strange. I was the kid who always took his bike to practice and walked to school. And I said, okay, well, let your mother pick us up. And I uh, waited a few minutes. And sure enough, here comes Marie. She was driving a little Chevy Chevette at the time. She was about this big. Could barely see over the steering wheel. She comes buzzing in to pick us up. And she drove us home. And in those 40 years, from that day to today, she introduced me to all of you, her, her, her daughter. And I'm just honored to have known her. I'm blessed to have been a part of her life. And I'm thrilled to be here to help drive her home today. And again, you talk about the Fs, you know, the faith, the family, the friends. She left one F out, though. Marie was a fighter, too. Don't be wrong. She was kind, but she could be tough. And uh, I guess I was always going to be a UPS driver because when I started driving Holly home, I would pull over to the curb in Clinton Street right in front of the house, and I'd just drop her off, and I'd drive off. And I ran into Marie the next day, and she cornered me, and she shook her little finger at me, <laughs> just like this, Keith. And she says, a gentleman always takes a lady to the door. And from that day forward, I always took her to the door. So Marie knew how to get her message across. <laughs> and she was kind and loving, but she was tough too. Anyone else like to share a word of memory? At this moment, sorry. No, there'll, no. there'll be time to continue to connect yeah. with the family as well um, after yeah. the service too. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, if you found yourself wondering, oh, I didn't know what other says that, you'll have that opportunity in talking with the family as well. What a joy it is to be able to share in her story, in her life, and uh, 
May her memory and those uh, experiences you've had with her continue to be modeled in uh, uh, the way in which you live and you share kindness each day. What it will be like when I walk by your side. I can only imagine what my eyes will see when your face is before me. I can only imagine. Yeah. Surrounded by your glory, what will my heart feel? Will I dance for you, Jesus? Or in all of you be still? Will I stand in your presence? Or to my knees will I fall? Will I sing hallelujah? Will I be able to speak it all? I can only imagine, yeah, I can only imagine, I can only imagine when that day comes and I find myself standing in the sun, I can only imagine when all I will do is forever, forever worship you, I can only imagine, I can only imagine, surrounded by your glory, what will my heart feel, will I dance for you, Jesus? Or in all of you be still, will I stand in your presence? Or to my knees will I fall, will I sing hallelujah? Will I be able to speak it all? I can only imagine, yeah, I can only imagine. But to my knees will I fall, will I sing hallelujah, will I be able to speak it all, I can only imagine, yeah, I can only imagine, I can only imagine. I can only imagine when all I will do is forever, forever worship you. I can only imagine. I can only imagine
It is that hope of that place that we can only imagine that that speaks life to us in a moment like this. It is also the hope of that life that no eye has seen and no ear has heard and no mind can imagine that Marie actually lived into prior to her entrance into eternity. And so we come to remember and to celebrate that life today. As we do, I want to share with you a letter that we received just a couple of days ago to the family and friends of Mrs. Marie Ross. Grace and peace to you through our Lord Jesus Christ. It is with sadness that we learned of the passing of Marie Ross, and we want you to know that the Board of General Superintendents and our office team share your sense of loss today. Even though these are days of sorrow, they are also days of rejoicing and hope because we know that our dear sister has heard the master say, well done, good and faithful servant, enter into the joy of the Lord. We're reminded at this time of Marie's more than 20 years of faithful service to the Lord and to the Church of the Nazarene as a devoted and loving spouse to her precious pastor husband, Stan. She gladly supported the ministry through teaching Sunday school, serving on church boards, caring for senior saints, and building up the body of Christ. Marie touched countless lives, and they will live on as testimony of her influence for Christ. For this, the Church of the Nazarene will remain grateful. I pray that you will sense the Lord's presence sustaining and comforting you today, and may the certainty of the hope that Marie has realized provide strength and comfort in this time of grief and in the days of adjustment yet to come. Grace and peace to you, Dr. Philemon Chambo. To you, the family, to Vinton, to Holly, to Heidi, to the grandchildren, to the great-grandchildren, let me express our heartfelt and deep condolences and sorrow and our thanks for sharing your mother, your grandmother, your great-grandmother with us. I want to say something to you this morning that your mom, your grandmother, your great-grandmother may have never had said to her, but she should have. For Marie was among a group of people who are the greatest and most unsung heroes and heroines of the faith and of the church. She was a pastor's spouse. I say that to you as the son of a pastor's spouse and now the husband of a pastor's spouse. There is no greater hero in the church or in the kingdom. I regret that I was never able actually to meet your mother, Stan, especially now hearing about her roasts and her cinnamon rolls. (laughs) But more than that about her love and her faithfulness. I've come quickly, though, to the realization through conversations with Pastor Tim and Pastor AJ and just hearing some of the stories today that Marie had a great love for the church and for the Church of the Nazarene even before assuming the title of pastor's spouse. And because she did, uh, she was willing to sacrifice for their shared ministry for the kingdom to be so incredibly faithful and effective. And so I, I want to say to you today, thank you for sharing Marie with us. We are a better church. The main district is a better district. We are a better denomination. And most significantly, we are a better and more faithful representation of the person of Jesus and the expression of the kingdom because of her life and her ministry. And so today we, we come to this space to, to do what's natural, to, to grieve, to mourn, to admit our collective heartbreak, to say to each other by our presence and by our tears that we will miss Marie. Acknowledging that even after 85 years, life is but a vapor vapor, an arrow speeding toward a target, admitting to each other the sad reality of earthly life that one day will come to an end, and we admit to each other, we admit to God our heartbreak, and yet even in the midst of our deepest hurt and our deepest heartbreak, we would dare, and I think Marie would encourage us 
to use words like worship and celebrate. We celebrate because Marie is whole. There is no more, nor will there ever be another cancer cell in her body. Praise be to God. We celebrate because Marie, who had discovered and lived this life abundant and eternal here, this life that no eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind could imagine, he, she, has cel- she has lived that life here, and so now she is, she is living this life in a place that all of us can really only imagine, as Pastor AJ just sung. She is, she's worshiping at the very feet of Jesus himself. We celebrate because we recognize a reality in which Marie lived every day of her life. Not just, not just one that we celebrate during Christmas, but one that we celebrate every day. That God, in the presence of Emmanuel, has come to be with us. To be with us in our greatest joy. And to be with us in the deepest sorrow. And so here's what I want to say to you this morning. God is here in this moment with us to mourn, and to celebrate. We enter into this moment, much like Mary and Martha in the 11th chapter of of John's gospel, we, we open the service with these words when we hear Jesus saying that he is the resurrection and the life. And we acknowledge in this moment the hurt and the heartache that we feel, perhaps even saying something at some point during these days like the sisters did when Jesus arrived on the scene four days too late. If only you'd been here. But we also acknowledge the one who wept with them. And I, I, I wonder sometimes if part of the reason that Jesus wept was not because, was partly because of his heartache, but partly because he knew what he had to call Lazarus back from. <laughs> But we acknowledge that Jesus is here in this moment weeping with us. He is is in this moment slipping his arms around us and and being with us. And his very presence is the reason for our hope. He is, as he said, the resurrection and the life. And when we confess our belief in that reality, we will, as Jesus tells us, really never die. And so we come to remember, we come to grieve, we come to celebrate the life of Marie Ann Ross, to celebrate the presence of God with us and to celebrate the fact that Marie is now with him. We we come to celebrate the life of a woman who, as has been shared in various ways this morning, was a, a woman who was incredibly faithful, faithful to her family, faithful to her church, faithful to her friends, and most importantly, faithful to her God. A faith that was proclaimed boldly and loudly through her everyday life. A a transformative faith that lived in the one who who is the reason for our hope on a day like this. The one who is the resurrection and the life. And so we celebrate and remember one who exemplified, exemplified what it means to live a life filled with faith. The life of one who was faithful. And that faith in that ever faithful one is what allowed Marie and all of us to experience and to live in the reality of the words that we sang together a little while ago. It truly is well with our soul. An experience in reality that allowed Marie to hear the words that we so often hear and quote in moments like this, well done, good and faithful servant. Welcome home. And I just imagine Jesus putting his arm around Marie and walking her down the streets of gold and telling everybody else, even Stan, listen, you'll have your time. But it's my time now. And who's going to argue with Jesus, right? And he walked her and said, this is your eternal home. Marie was an example of faithfulness. Because Marie served a God who had been faithful to her, and it is the faithful God that we come in this moment to worship. In Psalm 136, it's not always a passage of Scripture that that we read in moments like this, but the psalmist, I think, speaks a reminder that is crucial for us to hear. And in verses 1 through 9, we read, and I want you to to listen carefully because there's a theme here. Give thanks to the Lord for He is good. His faithful love endures forever. Give thanks to the God of gods. His faithful love endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord of lords. His faithful love endures forever. Give thanks to him who alone does mighty miracles. His 
faithful love endures forever. Give thanks to him who made the heavens so skillfully. His faithful love endures forever. Give thanks to him who placed the earth among the waters. His faithful love endures forever. Give thanks to him who made the heavenly lights. His faithful love endures forever. The sun to rule the day. His faithful love endures forever. And the moon and stars to rule the night. His faithful love endures forever. Are you catching the theme? His faithful love endures forever. Nine times in nine verses, the psalmist reminds us that the faithful love of the one in whom Marie had placed her faith endures forever. In fact, if you read the rest of the psalm, um, you will discover that there are 26 verses in that psalm. And 26 times the psalmist writes, his faithful love endures forever. I think he's trying to get a message across to us. You may be able to tell from my odd accent that I'm not originally from Maine. I'm still working on my accent. I'm from Missouri. And our, we are proud of our stubbornness. And even stubborn Missourians read a psalm like this and go, okay, there's a message there that I can't miss. His faithful love endures forever. Marie lived into that faithful love of God. And she gave her life to calling those around her to live into that same faithful love, a faithful love into which she lived despite her circumstances, even in the darkest moments of saying goodbye to her beloved Stan, even in the dark moment of hearing the diagnosis regarding her health, she lived a life of faith because she knew and experienced and lived into the truth of the words of the prophet Jeremiah. We read his, his words that are so familiar to us earlier, one of her favorite verses. But in Lamentations chapter 3, Jeremiah, the weeping prophet, says this, the thought of my suffering is bitter beyond words. And maybe, maybe, that's where you are this morning. I will never forget this awful time, the prophet wrote, as I grieve over my loss. But hear what, what he says next. Yet I will still dare to hope. When I remember this, the faithful love of the Lord never ends. His mercies never cease. Great is his faithfulness. His mercies begin afresh each morning. I say to myself, the Lord is my inheritance. Therefore, I will hope in him. Marie's faithfulness was simply a reflection of and a gratitude for the faithfulness that her God had displayed toward her. And so she was able to dare to live with her hope in the one whose mercies never cease and begin afresh each morning, in the one whose faithful love and faithfulness is great beyond measure. Marie lived into that hope made manifest in God's great faithfulness that each of us can know, a faithfulness that was embodied in the person of Jesus Christ, the one who is the resurrection and the life, the one who is our hope. And, 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 and while I may have never had the privilege of knowing Marie per personally, I think I can say with confidence that she would want me to remind us all of this truth this morning, that this life can be each of ours. That the resurrection, that eternal abundant life to the full that Jesus promised, that life that promises that we will never really die, it's available and it's offered to every person who has walked through these doors this morning. And all we have to do is respond in faith, a faith embodied in the life of Marie Ross, respond in faith to Jesus' question to Mary and Martha when he said, I am the resurrection and the life. Anyone who lives in me, even though they die, will never really die. They will live. And then he says this, do you believe it? And it was in faith that Marie responded early in life with a resounding, you better believe, I believe. <laughs> yes, I believe. And her life was lived as testimony to that faith in the one whose faithfulness is great and whose faithful love endures forever. The Apostle Paul reminds us of that faithful love and his words to the Christ followers in Rome when he says this, can anything ever separate us from Christ's love? Does it mean he no longer loves us if we have trouble or calamity or are persecuted or are hungry or destitute? <coughs> or in danger, or threatened with death. No, despite all of these things, overwhelming victory is ours through Christ who loved us. And I am convinced, he said, that nothing can ever separate us 
from God's love, neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither our fears for today nor our worries about tomorrow, not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. No power in the sky above or in the earth below. below. Indeed, nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus our Lord. His faithful love endures forever. And so today, as we grieve, we do not grieve as those without hope. We grieve as we give thanks and as we celebrate and as we worship for the one in whom Marie had placed her faith. His faithful love indeed endures forever. Father, we are grateful this morning for your love. A love that we can't comprehend, a love that we can't begin to uh, to really imagine, Father, as, as we heard those words, we, we can't, not only can we not imagine that place where Marie is, we can't imagine the love that has welcomed her and has been hers as she's lived this life. And Father, our prayer this morning is that, is that each one of us in this moment would, would, would affirm, yes, we believe that Jesus is the resurrection and the life, that he is the expression of that faithful love that endures forever, that he is the, he is the expression of the one in whom we can place our faith as, as Marie did and live in such a way so that when we leave this world, we can hear those words, welcome home, my beloved. So Father, we pray today that that very love of, of God's heart that is wrapped up in the person of Jesus Christ will embrace this family and friends. And may your presence through Christ made manifest through the Holy Spirit fill their hearts, fill their minds, and as they grieve, may they also be filled with hope. And may they also be filled with the very love of Christ from whom we cannot be separated, and from which we cannot be separated. And so, Father, may your presence, may your peace, may your comfort, may your healing fill the hearts of those gathered today. And may Marie truly live the life that she's longed for as she is with you. We pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Some brightly burning and some dark and cold. And there is a spirit who brings a fire, ignites a candle, and makes his own. Carry your candle and run to the darkness. Seek out the helpless, confused and torn, and hold out your candle for all to see it. Take your candle and go light your world. Take your candle. Frustrated brother, see how he's tried to light his own candle some other way. See now your sister, she's been robbed and lied to, still holds a candle without a Take your candle and go like your world. 
whose hearts are blazing. So let's raise our candles and light up the sky. Pray unto our Father in the name of Jesus. Make us a beacon in darkest times. As we close this service, you are invited, of course, to allow this place to be continue to be a place of prayer, to uh, reflect on her life, to to ask uh, the Lord to uh, work in your life the faith that she had as well. Of course, this is also an opportunity to to continue to share her stories, her her memories with the family, and to celebrate that uh, out in the foyer, or to stay here and just and, and reflect whatever helps you in this moment to uh, remember and to allow God to uh, reach to your heart. Uh, today, I want to uh, close with a blessing and a prayer for you and the family. Heavenly Father, today, I pray that you would pour out your spirit upon each one gathered here today. Lord, may we uh, be comforted by your grace and by your mercy. May we find indeed that uh, the kindness the joy, the heart of Marie would continue to just infect our lives and help us each and every day as we walk to remember and take that model of faith and allow it to become a part of who we are, that in turn we would come to know and see that uh, you are the God who continues to radically change and work in and among us. Be with the family especially right now for morning. And Lord, we celebrate the goodness that you have brought forth in our lives because of who Marie was and the impact she made. Lord, we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for coming and honoring Marie's life. This concludes this service. And Give the family a moment, if you would, to uh, uh, to step out, and then uh, uh, the rest of you could follow afterwards. Thank you.
thank you for allowing time for the family to step out. Um, now, if, if you'd like to come forward and pay final respects uh, to Marie, you can do that at the altar, um, and then you can head to the foyer to meet the family. <laughs>